Welcome to Basically Sci-Fi, the short story podcast with stories you can basically call sci-fi. My name's Todd. I'm Adam. And I'm Jared. So, I was uh, reading manga this morning. I was reading One Piece. And it is yeah. a manga that has been going on for uh, longer than Adam has been alive. Yes. <laughs> I think. No, not really. I think the thing that I like most about the manga is the world. Like, nothing even needs to be happening in the story or with the, the characters or anything at all. I just really like the world that it exists in. I I want that same feeling for my own writing. I want the world to just be like a place where you want to go and live. What do you guys think about uh, character-driven stories versus world-based stories i mean i write plenty of both so as far as a lot of my earlier stories weren't so character focused as just world building but um i've kind of moved away from that now into characters i think you gotta have some combination of the two i guess yeah definitely definitely uh without characters to focus on it'd be really hard to just kind of have a world yeah i mean it would be hard to draw someone's attention right you got to focus on something i suppose it could be a character it could be an event that's a little bit harder to narrate though yeah i think one of the best examples of stories that are centered around uh worlds like focused on like worlds and societies and stuff uh is the uh what's it called George R. R. No, Martin, that guy. <laughs> George R. R. Martin, or J. R. R. Martin, whichever one he is. Uh, Mar- right. Mr. Martin's wonderful fantasy in the sad place. Um, <laughs> the characters in that there's there's so many fucking characters, um, uh, but the the real kind of purpose. Just of that be clear, we're is, talking about Game of Thrones here. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> um, the- Song of uh, Boys and Men. Ice and Fire. Okay. Yeah, the Song of Boys and Men. Um, <laughs> uh, that that's that uh that story is more at least the one the the first few books is more about how society like bears down on people and like the effect and how they act and all that stuff and not so much or, like the individual characters like do things but like the world is so big and like so heavy like that you know you can't really do much. And you get a little bit of that in uh, Wheel of Time as well. A little bit familiar with the with the whole Game of Thrones, especially the TV show by now, right? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I mean, reading reading the book, I also was like, "All right, this is Ned's story where he wins the Game of Thrones. That's what's going to happen." And then <laughs> it wasn't. So I thought, I mean, yeah, it was still interesting that uh, it kind of gave the false impression that it was going to be character based yeah yeah that was very interesting yeah i i enjoyed those books i don't know like after that one big twist you kind of get it (laughs) oh from (laughs) then on yeah it's like okay yeah Uh, that's what this is oh here we have a we have a unlovable scumbag he's gonna live forever and here oh my goodness just the cutest little baby girl Hope she doesn't get <laughs> doused in gasoline and like they did in the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, haven't even yeah, haven't even seen the show. Still <laughs> uncomfortable with it. But yeah, yeah. don't remember that part. But yeah. all right, it's uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice baby you got there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no! Well, I hope that that there's a reason they call him Little Finger. I hope. Oh, that's, that's the one we're talking about. <laughs> I hope so many that of them. Anyway, you are ready for that level of of little dread fingers dread and terror and then some something to do with fingers because I'm gonna tell you my story uh, this week. Ooh, that's good because I really don't want to explain that joke I just made. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this story which uh is a direct uh continuation off of the last one this story yeah is called the killing goof oh on the planet ship the new australia 
at an outdoor firing range near the captain's quarters in the City of Dark, Airy the Executioner practiced using his newly grafted weaponized hand. Mitch the Hammer, the master shipwright of the Purple Pirates, was helping Airy figure out how to use the hand, while the Captain Turnip and his parents watched from an observation platform ten feet above. Okay, since you don't just want to be, like, brushing your hair and then suddenly have a space saber or a cannon pop out, the command input is a little complicated, Mitch began. For the sword, you have to swing your wrist around quarter circle forward two times quickly, and then cannon is back semicircle forward. Give it a shot. What the fuck are you talking about? What's that even mean? <laughs> Harry asked, suddenly in <laughs> doubt that his new hand could actually shoot lasers. No, no, it actually makes a lot of sense, right? Like the quarter circle motion of your hand replicates the act of pulling a sword from your hip. And the semicircle is kind of like loading a big slingshot and then shooting it forward. I thought it was a cannon. Yeah, it is. I'm just like trying to give you a mental image. Like these inputs aren't random. They're designed to be intuitive. It's nonsense. I look like an idiot. <laughs> Fine, okay, forget about the quarter circles and half circles, just copy what I do. Mitch waved his right hand quickly. Airy, though from a planet with relatively primitive technology, isn't stupid. And not everyone learns the same way. Airy is more of a visual learner. So when shown how to do so, he was able to quickly reproduce the motion. In a flash, Airy's new mechanical hand ripped open, twisted, folded back. Harry screamed in pain as his hand transformed, ripping open synthetic flesh, <laughs> folding the bones backwards in his fingers until they were perpendicular to his wrist. Ugh. A cannon muzzle protruded <laughs> from his wrist where his hand used to be. Oh, God, it hurts. Why does it hurt? <coughs> Harry glared at Mitch angrily. <laughs> well, I thought you'd want to retain feeling in your hand. It could be hard to fight or pick up objects if you lost sensation entirely. Unfortunately, the downside of retaining your sense of touch is that pain signals will also be reproduced, Mitch said, realizing he should have warned Airy about the pain first and feeling genuinely apologetic. Airy was inclined to reproduce some pain signals in Mitch, but the half-birdman's words <laughs> rung true. Airy thought about boobs and realized Mitch was right. <laughs> now that you've got the cannon readied point it down range and try pulling your trigger finger that should do the trick mitch instructed while demonstrating what's a trigger finger that's this one here mitch pointed oh you mean the pointer finger the hell is a trigger like <laughs> on a gun a gun uh. blaster if you pulled the thingy here, Mitch pointed to his own blaster, it makes the laser come out. Oh, that's what that's called. Yeah, it's a similar design to a crossbow, but we call that part the finger bang. You use your <laughs> finger to make the bang. What the hell does it mean to trig? How is it a trigger? Potato, potato, Mitch shrugged. Airy pointed his arm down range at the target and pulled the finger bang. With a burst of light, the target downrange was obliterated. Nice! Mitch and Airy high-fived. From the observation platform, the half-banshee Vrika's loins quivered as she watched. Oh my! He's so powerful! Yeah, definitely impressive. I've never seen anyone adapt to a graft so quickly. Chisai Toko noted as he put his tentacle on Vrika's shoulder. You doing okay, sweetie? Vrika's quivering ceased as her husband touched her, and she brushed his tentacle away. Yeah, I'm fine! Captain Turnip's eyes went wide with excitement. Mom, Mom! Can I cut off my stupid human hand and get a graft like his? It would be so much more piratey, right? Vrika answered without really hearing her son. Ask your dad! Dad? Don't cut off your hand, Nip. Then suddenly... There was a loud boom not coming from the direction of the firing range. The ground shook, and off in the horizon, a great tower of black steel and pointy science things rose from the ground, bursting above the skyline. As the tower became fully erected, a great wave of sand and debris swept over the firing range. 
Turnip's dad peed his pants a little and asked, Hey, Nip, were there meant to be any great towers being constructed instantaneously today? Captain Turnip joined his father in peeing his pants and responded, Not that I know of. Ari and Mitch both leapt up from the range and landed with great force to join the captain and his parents on the platform. The massive bulk of the men shook the platform, and the massive stink of muscled men filled Rika's nostrils, the combined force of which brought her to her ghostly knees. Never once saw a tower that big that didn't house a terrible evil, Ari observed correctly. He whipped his wrist around as he had done before and retracted the cannon, restoring use of his hand. He grimaced and grunted slightly, but knowing what was in store for him this time, didn't show any other signs of pain. I'll go with you, pal, Mitch said. I've still got to show you how to use your built-in space saber. Snapping from her man stink induced coma, Vrika said, We're coming too! Mom, I think they got this, Turnip whined. Vrika punched her son in his nose slash beak. <laughs> so now anyone could just go around building towers on your ship, Captain? No, you're right, Mom, let's go, he relented. In the recently above-ground City of Dark, at any given moment, it could be assumed that countless atrocities were being committed for no reason other than it seemed like something fun to do. It was here, among the burning, winding, labyrinthian streets, filled with equal parts corpses and drug-fueled sex piles, that the Great Black Tower had suddenly emerged from the ground. Upon arriving at the base of the tower, the captain, his parents, and his guests were rejoined by Commander Jacket, some of his men, as well as a dozen security droids. Jacket briefed the captain on what they knew. Okay, so you're telling me this tower burst out of the ground from where Professor Goofy's laboratory used to be? Yes, sir. The tower also seems to be jamming our comms as well, Commander Jacket said. That's no good! And this unauthorized construction can't be permitted now that the City of Dark is a part of the New Australia... Right, Captain? Vrika said as she glared at her son. Okay, okay, I'll do the thing. Captain Turnip closed his eyes and slowed his breath. Balancing his weight on his ghostly banshee leg, he curled his ecophrygian legs up tightly and then kicked the tower as hard as he could. The metallic tower vibrated and rung with sound before suddenly imploding, collapsing in on itself until it was nothing more than a pile of rubble. The pirates cheered, the security droids chirped, and Mitch and Ari looked on in amazement. Mitch ran up to Turnip and slapped him hard on his shoulder with his human hand, causing Turnip to lose balance. Oh, wow, my dude! That was impressive! I had my doubts about you being the captain, since you seemed like a timid little guy. But if you can kick things really hard like that, then maybe you really are cut out to be a pirate captain. <laughs> Turnip blushed. I don't know what kicking ability has to do with being a captain, but I will gladly accept your praise. While Turnip was basking in the praise of his men and his mom, a figure emerged from the dust. It was Professor Goofy, unharmed, unarmed, but grinning broadly. It seems you got my invitation. I suppose I could have called but this was the only way I could make sure that all the pieces would be in their proper place when you arrived. By the way, you there, Goofy pointed his mechanically augmented finger at Captain Turnip. Your next line will be, who are you and what are you doing? <laughs> who are you and what are you doing? Turnip said on cue. Your own commander jacket already told you that this was the laboratory of Professor Goofy. But since you haven't actually been listening to anyone, and only waiting for your turn to speak, you haven't even put together that the gray cyborg at Goofy's lab must be Goofy himself. Goofy then turned to face Ari. It's now your turn to say something stupid. Goofy! Ari growled. Long time no see. See what I mean? That contributed nothing to the conversation. It's like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Five years ago, you sent us completely off course. We could have ended this nonsense with the Galactic Society of Friends five years ago, but you tricked us into that portal. 
I haven't sent you off course, Goofy shrugged. Everything I've done has been leading to this moment. You probably wouldn't be able to understand the flow of the natural chain of events since our last encounter, so I won't bother going back that far. But, for example, why do you think I constructed this giant tower, jammed your comms, and came out unarmed without surrendering when it was so easily knocked down? I knew you and your friends had come to this ship. I knew you would be with the captain. I knew that the captain's overbearing mother would force her wimpy son to deal with me personally, and that you would join him. The next part of my plan involves coercing the pirates to assist me in capturing your friends and then killing one of them. If you're lucky, I'll just have to kill the one, and the rest of you can go on your way. W what? M makes you think my m men will do anything to help y you Turnip stammered out as bravely as he could. Oh, because my tower was the source of the jamming frequency, and now that you've knocked it down, this little emitter beacon I've got in my pocket is free to do its work reprogramming your security droids. Goofy then counted down. Three, two, one and the security droids opened fire on the unsuspecting pirates. Commander Jacket and his men didn't even return a single shot as their entire group was instantly dropped. Captain Turnip, I want you to bring me the one called Jared. He should have arrived with Ares' group. Turnip was trembling. His mutiny slash coup had been bloodless, and watching Commander Jacket and his men gunned down was the first time he'd seen people die. The sudden violence was too much for him to handle, and he fainted. His father did too, which is not at all relevant to the story in any way, but might as well be said. Vrika, I assume you carry as much authority on this ship as the captain. Call your medbay and tell them to bring me the one called Jared immediately. Vrika did as she was told. The medbay was a few minutes away, so while they waited for Jared to be brought to Goofy, Ari, Mitch, Vrika, Goofy, and the droids were forced to suffer through an uncomfortable silence. Eventually, Ari asked Goofy if his penis was mechanically augmented, and everyone immediately said that was an inappropriate question to ask. But Ari weirdly refused <laughs> to drop the topic, so Goofy relented by answering no. After a couple more minutes of awkward silence, Ari was about to ask if Goofy's butthole was mechanically augmented. <laughs> <laughs> But they were spared that conversation by the arrival of a replacement squad of pirates, along with Raven and Rupert. The Spermartian intern was still bedridden, due to the hole in his torso, but Raven had been provided with robotic braces for his legs, enabling him to walk despite the fact that his bones were broken. Goofy approached the human boy and loomed over him. Goofy then pulled a gun from his lab coat. Raven spat at Goofy's face but since Goofy was so much taller than the boy, a little bit of the spittle fell back and landed on his own. <laughs> what are you gonna do? You gonna shoot me? Do it! See if I care! There's no need for bravado, Goofy said, wiping the small amount of spit that managed to hit him. I wouldn't be so foolish as to do that. We all know that wouldn't be the true end for you, since you are in fact the main character of the universe. Ari rolled his eyes. Don't encourage him. He's a little shit. No, no, Goofy said. He really is the main character. For you see, like Vin, Edeth, Cuck, and Purdue, he is also one of the fingered. You remember that Vin exchanged his sense of respect for the power to break any law, man-made or natural. Edeth and Purdue traded their sense of doubt for the power to do anything, no matter how stupid or nonsensical. This boy you've been dragging around with you traded his sense of fear for the ability to never truly die. What's any of that matter? Well, I'm gonna tell you something you may not know about me. I'm also one of the fingered. I've traded my sense of empathy for perfect objective logic, which was definitely one of the better deals available. Ari and Mitch quickly huddled up. I've got a plan, Ari whispered. Good, Mitch nodded. Because I've got no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> when we defeated Edeth, all we had to do to fuck with their no-doubt gimmick 
was embarrass them to death. <laughs> if you manage to restore their missing sense, they lose their powers. How do we get him to feel empathy? Like I said, I've got a plan. Ari himself had been pretty sociopathic, he explained, until he left Meteoria 7. I'd had a wife I barely cared for, a job that involved killing all kinds of ambiguously guilty criminals, and a habit of making plans to hang out with friends that I never intended to keep. The number of times <laughs> I left Greg the Rat Man hanging at the pub by himself makes me blush to think about. But also laugh, because Greg, <laughs> he was so desperate for a friend. <laughs> uh, oh my god. <laughs> rat scallions truly are second class citizens. That last part he thought to himself. It wasn't until a dear friend of mine sacrificed her life to save my whole planet from a deadly space virus. I'll never forget how she, that friend of mine, the one I met who was with Nova, <laughs> she redirected that rocket, carrying the virus into a nearby star. That was very nice of her to do. Also, I think she would have fucked me. Maybe even had a three-way with Nova. I guess the point of what I'm saying is, I'm a lot more empathetic now. So, Mitch interrupted, we just need to kill one of his friends? Yes, and I think I know just the guy. To be continued. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Not Ragfucker, no! <laughs> 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 that man had better come out of this, or that rag guy had better come out of this like, <laughs> unscathed is all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll see on the next episode <laughs> next week no cliffhangers uh yeah probably no uh no side stories probably no intermission <laughs> probably pick up next time <laughs> uh where we left off yeah it's the big fight or the big conflict resolution attempt <laughs> by the heroes <laughs> maybe we'll see i haven't written it yet so i don't know <laughs> I'm very excited to see uh, some explanation of the various powers of the fingered. That was something that I really enjoyed. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, the whole time we've been sitting here trying to like, guess, like, oh, I know Edith has no doubt, because that's... Right. He says it. But, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No but doubt. the others were like a big mystery, especially Goofy's. Yeah, yeah. And Jared's as well. We knew he was the main character, but we didn't know exactly why. <laughs> Raven. Even I didn't know why. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy, hasn't, uh, Goofy hasn't heard yet that he changed his name. That's all. Oh, that would have been funny if he was like, he was like, yeah. bring me the one called Jared. And he's like, I'm Raven, you ass. And well, <laughs> I was going to get into a bit about that's why they brought Rupert, too, because they they didn't know who Jared was. They're like, who anyone here named Jared? And everyone was like, no. So they're like, all right, I guess just bring everyone. <laughs> Including Rupert. Uh, yep. So they brought Rupert. Rupert is going to be a pervert. pervert. The pervert. <laughs> Even though he's <laughs> bedridden. He exchanged his sense yeah. of decency for unlimited power. <laughs> Rupert? <laughs> maybe maybe it, when the next generation of fingered come about, maybe that'll be a thing. Speaking of fingered, yeah, <clears throat> the uh, finger bang as a trigger is that a reference to a previous thing you'd said, or was that new? <laughs> I feel like I've heard that before. Uh, but I can't remember. There was an episode that I just titled "The Finger Bang Theory," I guess, but I don't know. That's a, yeah. it's a funny yeah. word. But I did look yeah. up the etymology of the word trigger, and oh, yeah. uh, I made a note <laughs> in my story too, because yeah, I wanted to make the joke. I'm like, what the how the how the fuck do you trig, right? What's a trigger? <laughs> and uh, yeah. it comes from the Dutch trekker. Uh, Dutch trek is to pull. So yeah, trekker is a pull thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. So that's why it's called a trekker and not a finger bang. I think <laughs> calling it a finger bang would be a lot more exciting. Right? I think it makes a lot more sense. Use your finger to make the bang. And we get news stories like, tonight a man got finger banged right in the middle of the street. <laughs> what? 
And that that would be uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It wouldn't be replacing the word shot. All those libs getting finger banged over. (laughs) There we go. News. Gonna finger bang the libtards. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, I'm getting finger banged over here. (laughs) That's how you know. Uh, I'm not getting trekked. I don't even have any boots. (laughs) Don't even go near no mountains. Nope. F that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, sorry nothing really happened in this story, but hopefully there were a couple of jokes. <laughs> Everything happened in this story. Everything came yeah. to a head. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to wait for the big the big manly spaceman to come and save everybody. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> ice giants, that's what they're called. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Quick note, resolution to pod. He'll show up five minutes too late because he hadn't thought of putting them in the final story yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying with world building. Uh, I Or yeah. stories about worlds. I, I do know, uh, I've got notes about where the Frost Giants are and what they're doing. And uh, um, yeah. yeah, I've got plans for them being up on the uh, Galactic Society of Friends, which hopefully makes sense with all the other hints that I've dropped here and there, but <laughs> you know, since we listen to these stories so infrequently, I'll still have to do a bunch of exposition yeah. to make sure it all makes sense when I do it. Yeah. 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 So I'll I'm, I'll do my best. Yeah, good story. Very Thanks. funny. Thank you. There were a couple of parts in it that uh made I think I laughed at you guys' reaction to the, the butthole joke a little bit. Too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right well i'll mark that one down as uh having gone over well thank you guys very much for <laughs> listening to my story and next mm. week we'll have a story from adam yes yes which we are very much <laughs> looking forward to as well i didn't make you do the thing this time i just don't, said your don't name. make your don't put your expectations too high keep them nice and low so it's easy to meet okay <laughs> that's that's, that's, all that's I marketing ask. i just want honesty <laughs> in my marketing <laughs> make sure to follow us or subscribe on youtube uh we do have a twitter haven't updated it in a while we've got a discord that is something you can participate in Unless you're already a member. Well, I mean, even yeah, if you're still a member, you can participate. I'm just saying you can't. You can join as many times as you want. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> just make a shit ton of accounts and join. Please. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to make a bunch of accounts, do it on YouTube. That's the one that matters. Anyway, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.